Hey there, this is yet another video about the book that we are about to launch, Me and the Packet Publishing. We have a partnership, if you don't know about that, uh, the link will be in the description so you can pre-order the book and also when the book launches it will also redirect you to the Amazon page, so the book's Amazon page. The book is all about making online multiplayer games with Godot Engine 4. So in this video we are going to talk, to talk about how the hell, <laughs> how did I got into writing a book? And especially how did I manage to write a book about something that I had no experience ever? And it was actually the topic that I was most afraid of when I was in my game development college. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So throughout this video, we are going through the questions that the packet team asked me in their author's interview. So guys, this is the direct access to the interview before it even launches. Guys, you, just, you have so much privilege. Don't you recognize that? <laughs> so we have some structure here, so I will follow the, the questions. But here in this video, I'm free to use some images because in the interview, they don't allow, they don't allow me to, to use uh, images to upload images and stuff like this so here in this video we are going into more details and it will be something way more personal as well I hope that you guys enjoy some personal content you are going through some of my I'm going to open a little bit of my heart to you guys because something that inspired me to accept this offer from the packet team was uh, a game that I was trying to make for a girl so we used to date, but we had some, uh, we, we, we broke up and I recognized some stuff that I did wrong and I tried to make one of those grand gestures. Hey, I want to make a game together with you, which I don't rec recommend you guys to do. Don't make grand gestures, don't write letters, <laughs> this fucked everything up. But uh, it was on this, well, well, let's not. <laughs> let's not skip steps, right? So let's get into the questions. We'll, we'll get there. So, first things first, what is your specialist tech area? Well, as you guys know, I am a game developer, but my specialization is in game design, which is a whole area. So, the thing that I actually study is how humans respond to incentives. This is actually how I I personally define, and I think that this should be <laughs> an industry standard. Uh, I define games as a system of, or, or a, a set of systems of incentives. So games are but systems of incentives, which we can have like positive incentives, which we use call them rewards, but we also have negative incentives, which we call them punishments. But this is not just in mechanic wise so for instance we have visual positive incentives visual negative incentives uh audio uh, audio positive incentives and everything like that but also we have like psychological positive and negative incentives as well so i abstract games as being just a set of systems of incentives and this is why i so this is my tech area i am a game designer but i i went through into i went I went into game development because I want to apply these concepts uh, in practical media. So I want to test out how these things behave, how I can manage to make the positive incentives towards a goal. So this is this is the thing. Games are incentives towards a goal. So if you are moving closer to the goal, you are going to be positive incentive. We are going to get positive incentives. If you are going further away from the goal, we are going to have negative incentives. So, um, but yeah, uh, answering the question, I am a game developer in the tech industry, but I'm also a game designer. So I study how humans respond to incentives. So we reached the question that I started the video with, which is how did you become an author for Packet? Tell us about your journey. What was your motivation for writing this book? So guys, prepare yourself for some emotional stuff. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the whole thing that led me to develop this game. So I used to date this girl. Uh, we dated very briefly for about like four months. 
but we just to be friends for like 10 years or, or more so I don't want it to, to screw stuff and like yeah to mess stuff up but we we did <laughs> we messed stuff so we broke up we stopped dating and after some time we tried to rekindle but I didn't take that very well and at some point we had like a very <laughs> heated argument and at this very first and at this very day uh, we, we were hanging out and when she went back to her house I tried to to talk with her but I also had to take my grandfather to the hospital and when I come back home uh, I was trying to to have this talk with this girl and we also we ended up like fighting and arguing and discussing and she replied quite badly because I, I said some bad stuff as well but and I tried to call her so we could actually trying to hey no let's not take thing takes thing this way but right when I pay, uh, take the, the phone to call her my sister called me saying that my grandfather died and I say guys uh, I, I have to set up some priorities here. I was going to take care of my grandfather's funeral I will deal with that later so after uh, about one month when everything like the dust settled settle, I tried to call her again and she blocked me everywhere <laughs> Real. and I say okay I'm going to take some time to reach back again uh, but I set up a notification for reaching out to her in her birthday which was yesterday December the first the, the fourth uh, so in the previous year I set up a, a notification to to get in touch with her in her birthday and I decided to make the concept of a game based on a song that she wrote so she is a Sagittarius and I'm an, an Aries, right? So she wrote a song. Uh, I don't know if it, it was for for us, but for me and her. But um, she had this song that she sent me. And it's all, all about like Sagittarius and, and Aries and galaxy stuff and binary systems. And I was like, man, this song has a very good concept. So I decided to make a game uh, on top of this song and uh, I come out with a concept about a game that was heavily inspired by Cuphead like the, those airplane levels when we fight uh, bosses especially the Hilda, Hilda Hilberg yeah I don't remember the exact nom name but especially this level where we fight this character that transforms that turns into like a Gemini and a Taurus and a, a Sagittarius, right? And I say, man, imagine if this was a whole game where we fight level, where, where we, we have like a spaceship or a rocket, something like this, and we go through some levels and the boss is at the end of the level and the bosses are like zodiac signs. And I like make this concept of this game but after some point, I decided to make an adventure game. This one would be like a side scroller shooter, but I decided to make a top-down space shooter uh, that is, would be an adventure game because I wanted this girl to write the letters. The concept that I come out with was like, imagine if we were like in the far, far future and every planet was already like populated, so we live in every planet in the Milky Way, not the, the Milky Way, the solar system. And like there is this <laughs> this mailing company that deliver letters between this planet or deliver packages uh, between these planets, and each planet is guarded by its zodiac sign. So, for instance, Mars is guarded by Aries, right? So, and Jupiter by Sagittarius. And I say, man, this has some potential because if I add some Lovecraftian stuff here and some pop culture references there this game has a lot of potential to, to become something really really cool uh, the whole idea of the, the main mechanic of the game is that you defeat the zodiac signs and they turn out to be like powers that you can switch and your the bullets of your spaceship become like like enhanced by these zodiac signs powers 
So for instance, when you defeat areas, your bullets turn out to be like explosive because this is a, a, a trait of Ares, right? <laughs> Unfortunately. And uh, I decided to make this concept and come out and refine some stuff so that when I reached out to her in her birthday, the same as the fourth, I will have something to, to show to her, like one of those grand gestures, which guys, I don't recommend you to do. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't write letters. Don't. If if the person asks you for space, just give them space and let them be and come come back to you at their own pace, guys. We have to to have mat mature attitudes in this sense, which I didn't have back then. But anyway, and when uh, and we decided to hang out in her birthday, we went to a cafe. And I explained her this whole thing and she she said that wow this sounds like, like amazing and I said but I want to make something very very interesting after that because I want the players to after finish the, the main quest line which is the delivering of these letters between the the citizens of the, these planets guarded by each uh, zodiac sign I want the parallel universes to converge into a single universe and each universe is like the each player's universe, right? So each player will be playing like in parallel universe. After this event, when they finished up the, the main quest line, they would like be in the same universe. So like, like I don't know if, I don't remember the, the actual name of this kind of like merging of universes, but Marvel come out with this concept as well. And I say, and after this point forward, players will be playing together, delivering packages together and delivering packages to each other. So I could send I could send her, for instance, a letter be, uh, using this system. Uh, so I can like write a letter, tell a player to deliver to her and they will find her and deliver the letter to her. Uh, this is the concept of the game, but for that I will need to have some online multiplayer games skills which is something that i didn't have because this is like one of the things that i didn't i was always afraid to work with when i was in my game development college i was like no i, I don't want to work with that this is very complex i don't want to deal with that yet because i want to make some single player games before i actually dive into like the complexity of multiplayer games and i always like neglecting this kind of knowledge but she said no no don't 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 be afraid of that. You always figure out stuff. You always get your way through stuff. And she's very supportive. And, and yeah, she's she's a good person. She's amazing. And right when we went out the <laughs> the cafe, we paid the bills and we went out the, the cafe, uh, I got a message from Irvi, which is one of those packet recruit recruiters saying, hey, Enrique, we want to know if you are interested in writing a book about online multiplayer games and i look at her and say man this has to be god saying <laughs> this has to be god uh, working behind the scenes because uh, there is no way this could happen like today like this time <laughs> so if you guys don't know i'm converted i'm now a christian guys so after 28 years of atheism i'm now converted to christianism so welcome to one of the few game development, uh, Christian development, Christian game development channels in YouTube, guys. How awesome is that? And after that, I accepted. She said, man, you have to accept that. This, this is God telling you to develop these skills so we can make this game. <laughs> so we can make this happen. And I said, yeah, I'm going to accept it. I know that. I, I'm going to, to learn these skills so we can make this game. And, well, we didn't rekindle, just so you guys know, <laughs> we didn't rekindle, she's dating another person, uh, it's okay, but yeah, so this is the story behind this book, so it, start, it, it all started with a grand gesture that I wanted to make to this girl, so we could rekindle, and well, at some point I think that we will make this game. So if you go to chapter 9 of the book, uh, this, this project that we made on chapter that we make on chapter 9 is the very rough prototype of this game so this is a a, a 
tri uh, trivia here. <laughs> uh, the Chapters 9 pro project is a the very prototype that I made to, to make this whole integration of players in this game. Uh, it's very primitive stuff, so it's not near what I wanted, what I want to do. But yeah, it all started with this game. So there you have it. This was the motivation to write this book. So next question, what kind of research did you do? And how long did you spend researching before beginning the book? Guys, I have to confess. <laughs> this book is basically a documentation about my process to learning uh, Godot's network API, because as I said, I had never worked with online multiplayer games before and back then Godot 4 didn't even launch we were in the verge of launching Godot 4 so there was that there was no documentation there were no videos about that yeah that there were some like um, videos about like RPCs and multiplayer spawners and synchronizers but nothing like explain the the technology behind it like the inet library right so i didn't understand how to do it and why do this why everything like work together and how we don't we don't need to send like udp or tcp we don't have to make like those kind of serialization deserialization how how everything worked worked so uh i had to get in contact with the the very person that made this like like uh, Fabio Alessandrelli and how does I how can I make this work how does this work and he explained that to me and very very briefly as well so I would add the tweets here and most of the part of the the book is basically me trying to understand how network works and basically I documented that so replying to the question what kind of research did, did I do? I made, <laughs> I searched for the documentation. I searched like on chat GPT, like asking how does network works? What are the major protocols? Uh, what, how can I make, how do computers like set up? Like what is the handshake procedure? All of this stuff was like new to me. I had never ever worked with that. And how, how long did I spend researching before beginning the book? I didn't research before beginning the book. I dived right into the process, and but I researched a lot, a lot between chapters. So each chapter I made a very heavy research. We have very tight deadlines. So originally we we have a tentative date for like July or August to to release the the book. But I I had I got in touch with the project manager and I say guys I I have no idea how this works there is no documentation about there there is no resources to learn this on Guru specifically I will have to basically make a a course to learn this before <laughs> actually writing the book but I said hey let's be patient I will learn as I do and I will basically document this process so the good thing about this book is that you are going through the journey that I went through to learn how to make online multiplayer games. So we are going to enter in my brain and see how did I learn that because the the content that is on the book is the process that I went through to learn this this technology and these skills. So this is another cool thing to, to have in mind. Like this is how we, or at least me, learn how to make online multiplayer games. So I started researching the protocols. So how do Godot make, how does Godot make that with the inet library? So what are the difficulties? Why do, do does the inet library, what is the, the solution that inet library provides? Why don't we use UDP and TCP instead? And after that, we learn that. And after that, we apply some knowledge and we actually dive into what Godot has to offer, like the multiplayer spawner, the multiplayer uh, synchronizer, the RPCs, and all everything like that. And after that, we optimize stuff because we learn how to do it, but we don't learn how to do it well. So after that, we refine stuff. So uh, you are going through the very process that I went through to learn how to make online multiplayer games as well. How awesome is that? <laughs>
So let's dive into the next question. Did you face any challenges during the writing process? How did you overcome them? Well, as I said, I had never ever worked with uh, online multiplayer games and networking in general. If you guys remember, I had like a series. So this this networking and internet stuff started way earlier. Like uh, previously, in the pre previous year, I worked with a partnership with the guys from Loot Locker, which is all about making HTTP requests and like uh, having like a REST API. But even then, uh, I didn't actually manage to make two computers like have two instances of a game that should like synchronize and they should have like a shared experience. Uh, and well, w one of the most difficult stuff was trying to find documentation for stuff. Like uh, back then, as I said, Good Old Four didn't had even launched, so we don't we didn't have like any resources about that. I researched for YouTube videos, as I said, but most of the stuff was like very scarce. Especially like optimization and the very API itself was very, very scarce to, to find uh, learning resources about it. Which, to be honest, I think that I will make a whole course about it after the, the using this book as main learning resource because th there's nothing about that in the internet. Like how to make online multiplayer games with good engine, there is no course about it. But yeah, another another challenge that I faced was that initially I wanted to make like just a small prototype on chapter nine, which is what's basically like just how can you save progress, a player's progress into an online multiplayer game, which is basically just storing, uh, storing data into a database and sending this data back and forth from the client and the server, right? And after that, I decided, hey, this has a lot of potential to become something even uh, greater, to provide a lot of value to the readers, because if we just keep with that, we are going to basically disappoint you guys, because we are not scaling things up. We are basically just maintaining the, the flow from the past chapters and just basically reaching a conclusion. Uh, my, my dog is messing up with the camera. Just a second. Okay, so, uh, and after that, I decided to make this, I decided to take this prototype that I was making for this game that I told you uh, previously, and say, hey, this is the time to, to, <laughs> to actually make what I, I decided to make with this, uh, with this project, which is to learn how will I make this game. Uh, so I made this prototype, and this, this was very difficult to, to deal with because um was the first time in the book that we actually brought like a continuous work that exists apart from players so like the server will like keep the 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 game running and when players enter the game they will synchronize the game with the server's game and this can have like a lot of issues guys you had no idea but yeah, so a lot of difficulties, as I said. So, uh, as I said, uh, in the my grandparent, my grandfather died, and in the middle of the process of writing this book, my grandmother died as well. So, and a lot of like I broke up with my girlfriend, which is not that girl that I told you about. But uh, yeah, a lot of lot of stuff going on. So nowadays I basically live alone in Brazil with my sister that lives in another city practically and my father that lives in a, a way farther uh, city. So basically uh, after that I, I started with a very adulthood chapter of my life. <laughs> and this all come together. So yeah, a lot of difficulties in the middle of writing this project or, the, or writing this book. Okay, so next question, what's your take on the technologies discussed in the book? Where do you see these technologies hidden in the future, guys? This is cool. So, uh, my major takeaway in the technologies that Google provides is that they are awesome. 
and basically that has everything in good. <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, the way that Fabio implemented like RPCs and the whole like multiplayer synchronizer and the multiplayer spawner, which is amazing, is just like there is no way, there is no like excuse to not try out making online multiplayer games with good at engine because. It's so simple, guys. You basically just have to make a, a handshake saying that, oh, I'm a server, and then we have like a client saying, hey, I want to connect with you. They make a handshake, and after that, you can use the multiplayer synchronizer, the multiplayer spawner, and RPCs to make basically a, a single player game that works on everyone else's uh, instance of the game. Especially the multiplayer synchronizer, especially the multiplayer spawner is like amazing because. Uh, you can set up a, a a scene, and when this scenes spot, when this scene is scenes actually, you can make you can add more than one scene. When this scene spawns, uh, it will be replicated automatically, like automatically, guys. <laughs> this is like <laughs> witchcraft. And using RPCs, you can basically like make function calls to an object that doesn't exist in your computer. This is mind blowing gosh so yeah uh the my car takeaway uh, my take on this technology is like this uh is amazing this is very empowering i really want to make online multiplayer games from now on because we can make like even if like 10 or 15 or like 20 people play my games it will work because it will be amazing to see to see how these people will collaborate with each other and connect with each other into the same journey. So I remember this game from uh, what is the the name of this game designer? I I forgot it. I I yeah I can't remember. But it's a game about like uh, living in fifteen uh, in 60, 60 minutes. So you you born and then you grow older and older and you get older and, and older until you reach like sixty years and then you die. And it's like a roguelike or something like this because after it has permadeath, but you can like come back again, and other players will take care of you when you come back again, uh, with uh, like when you are like a baby or something like this. So you can start to maintain some progress that you did by providing to these other players, and they will take care of you. So this can help a lot into like connecting people into understanding this kind of human connections you know so uh, yeah this is the kind of stuff that I, I i really want to make with this new technology where do you see these technologies hitting in the future guys after you understand how you can make and set up uh two computers or more to work together the possibilities are like infinite right so this is like a one of those breaking points where you just start to making like the most amazing stuff because Nowadays, after this knowledge, after you understand this technology, you, you can make like applications. So, for instance, uh, not not only games, but you can make like apps that work with together and connect with together. Like, I don't know, I have no idea idea what you guys want to make, but this is a powerful knowledge. This is something very very powerful to connect two machines together and allow players or users to like connect with with each other. This is. One of the most amazing skills that some someone that works in the tech tech industry can have at the uh, at the tool belt. So most of the other questions are more leaning towards like the product itself and the process of working with packet, which to be honest was amazing. Everyone there was was like really patient with me. They understood the difficulties of working with uh, someone that didn't actually had all the experience necessary to work a book like in three, four, six months. And they also understood that we didn't have any learning resources and no resource on the internet about this. So everyone was very, very patient. And we reached out like a very good uh, deadline actually, because uh, guys, let's be honest, this is the time that you guys actually have money to pay for this stuff so <laughs> it's the best time to to release this book 
The book will be released uh, in December 22. So get your wallets ready. <laughs> you can pre-order as well. I will put the link in the description. This is the link here in the, in the screen as well. If you want to like digit it manually. But most of the other questions are basically leaning towards that. But so I would just say that the core takeaway from the book that I want you to have after you read it is that connect people together to make amazing stuff. This is this is the thing. Try to make something that people can work together and collaborate towards a shared goal and build some amazing stories. And that's it. Uh, this is the the access the, the pre <laughs> how is it called? Yeah, so you have like uh, early access to the author's interview <laughs> to this video. I really hope you enjoy it. Guys, pre-order the book right now because this book is amazing. I am really, really proud of that. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and until the next time. See you there.